Uh, hi everyone and welcome back to this series of electrical A1 BEO exam which is about circuit and this is the third question in the series about circuit reduction. Now this question is different than the previous two ones where you need, you have to do from delta to y uh, conversion. In this question you may do that but you will complicate your problem. There is a much much easier way to do that. So basically here you can see that this is a delta configuration here and here this is also a delta configuration. You can change this delta to y but you will take much much longer step. On the other hand there is a much easier approach to solve this question as we will see. So the first thing to find the equivalent resistance between A and B is to remove the source. The second, so this is your A and this is your B. You need to number the terminals and that will make it easy for you, especially to see the resistors that they are in parallel combination. So let me number the nodes. So this is node number one. This is number two. This is also two. This is also two. And this is two. And this is two because there is no any element in this, just a wire. So this is all the same node. We are left with this. So this is a three. So we have three nodes here. Now you can notice that the 25 ohm between 1 and 3, there is nothing else connected between 1 and 3. However, the 30 ohm is between 2 and 3. The 40 ohm is also between 2 and 3. So these two are in parallel. Although it may not look like that when you look first to the circuit, but when you number the nodes, you can easily figure out this and without any problem. So you will have the 30 ohm is in parallel with the 40 ohm. So their equivalent resistance is 30 times 40 over 30 plus 40. And this will give me a total resistance equal to 17.14 ohms. Now I would redraw the circuit and replace the 30 ohm and the 40 ohm with its equivalent resistance. Now when you add two resistors in parallel, the equivalent resistance will stay between the same two nodes, which is two and, and three. The other resistors, we don't move them, we don't change them, so they should stay at the same two nodes. So let me redraw the circuit now. So this is my A and B, this is my 10, this is my 20, and this is my five. Now this 20 is basically between node one and node number two. So let's go up here, okay? And let me put my the 25 here. Oh, the 25 ohm is between one and node three. And then I will have here the 40 ohm between one and two. So this has to go all the way until it goes to the two. So this is between one. So all these resistors, this and this, and this, they are maintaining its nodes. Now, the last one is the equivalent, which is between two and three, so it has to be between these two nodes, and this is 17.14 ohm. And now you can see here that clearly that this 40 ohm between one and two, this 25 in series with the 17.14 between one and two, and this 20 is also between one and two. So all these three resistors, basically, so I can take all of this and replace it with one R. So this R is equal to one over 20 plus one over 25 plus 17.14 plus one over 40 and take the inverse of this. And this will give me basically 10.12 ohm. So now, my equivalent circuit will be 10, 10.12. Again, this is between node one and two. This is all the parallel combinations. And here is my five ohm. So my R between point A and B is equal to 10 plus 10.12 plus five. And this will give me 25.1. Two, one, two. Okay, so that's basically your total 
resistance. Now, let's see the second requirement. The second requirement, it says, basically, calculate I0, this, this resistance, this current, sorry. Okay, now, it doesn't specify the technique. I personally like to do deal with nodal analysis. Now, in nodal analysis, once you know the node voltages, then you can find anything in the circuit, as we will see. So I want to solve this using nodal analysis. But before that, I would like to do a little bit of reduction in the circuit. This 5 ohm and this 10 ohms, they are in series. So I will add them, and this can reduce the number of nodes by 1, and this will reduce the number of unknowns. So that would be my circuit. So this will be 10 and 5, 15 ohms, okay? So this is my reference now here. This is V equal to zero. This node is the voltage between here to the ground, which is 30 volt. This is unknown, which is V1. This is another unknown, which is V2. That's it, we have only two node voltages, so I need only two equations. So this become a very, very easy problem to, uh, to solve. So apply. KCL at V1. So assume all the currents are leaving. So we have four currents, because we have four branches. So I have to have four items in my equation. So the current to the left, V1 minus 30 divided by 15, plus the current that goes down, V1 divided by 20, to the right, V1 minus V2 over 25, plus the one that goes up here is V1 divided by 40. Remember, this and this and this and this all one node, so this is connected to the ground. This is equal to zero. I will multiply by the least most common denominator, so I multiply by 600. So this becomes 40 V1 minus 30 plus 30 V1 plus 15 V1. Sorry, uh, this is basically uh, 24 V1 minus V2 plus 15 V1 equal to 0. Now open the term, so we will have 109 V1 minus 24V2 is equal to 1200, and this is my first equation. Then apply KCL at V2. To avoid any confusion, let me change the color here. So assume here we have the currents going in this direction, this direction, this direction. We can assume any direction for any specific KCL, as far as you apply KCL correctly, which is current leaves the node equal to the current enter the node, I always assume the current leaving the node, unless there is a current source, then I have to follow exactly the same direction. So basically here we will have uh, V2 minus V1 over 25, this is the current to the left, plus V2 divided by 40, the current to the bottom, plus V2 over 30, the upper current here, and this is equal to zero. Again, I will multiply by the least most common denominator, which is 600. This will give me 24 V2 minus V1 plus 15 V2 plus 20 V2 equal to zero. So we'll have minus 24 V1 plus 59 V2 equal to zero. And this is my second equation. So we have two equations with two unknown. We can easily solve them. So from equation two, from two, which is this equation, we can say that your V1 is equal to 59 divided by 24 V2. This is my third equation. Let me see. So substitute 3 in 1. So basically here you will have, I will just come take 
this and substitute in this value. So you will have 109.59 over 24v2 minus 24v2 is equal to 1200. So from this solve for v2, your v2 will equal to 4.92 volt. Once you know V2, we know that V1 is equal to this. So this means that your V1 is equal to 12.09 volt. So the voltage here, this is grounded, is equal to 12.09. The voltage at this node is basically equal to 4.92. Now, I need this current, I0. So if I apply KCL here, this current, I1, this current I2 equal to I0. So I1 plus I2 is equal to I0. Now I1 is this voltage, the 12.09 minus this voltage, which is 0, divide by 40 plus this node voltage, which is 4.92 minus, again, this the voltage here is 0, divide by 30. This is your I0. And from this, your I0 is equal to 0.466 amp. So this is a very important question because as you can see here, although the norm that we use delta to Y conversion, in this question, if you realize that these two resistors are in parallel, it becomes much easier problem. The second thing that whenever they, they don't specify to you to use any specific technique, Always go for nodal because nodal is easy to implement and the number of equations is much, much less than any other uh, or, or many of the other uh, techniques.